On May 7, 2024, the Carroll County Comet, based in Delphi, Indiana, released an article by reporter Amy Graham McCarty regarding her interview with William Labrado, the former defense attorney for Richard Allen. In that article, Labrado discussed what he heard that day in Allen County Superior Court in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He also discussed the history of his work representing the accused Richard Allen and his relationship with the prosecutors in the case. Richard Allen's current legal counsel has waived their client's right to a speedy trial, a trial they requested in March. A new trial date in Carroll County has been set for October 14th through November 15th. Allen has been charged with two counts of felony murder and two counts of murder in the deaths of Abby Williams and Libby German. The girls were reported missing on February 13, 2017, after they were dropped off at the Monon High Bridge Trail to go hiking. Their bodies were found the next day not far from the bridge. Today, May 7th, during a pre-trial hearing to discuss the length of the trial, Brad Rosie, one of Allen's attorneys, said to Special Judge Fran Gall, You don't know anything about this case. Rosie followed a statement by Gall, who said, if you can't try this case in one month, there's something wrong. Allen County's chief public defender and the defendant's former attorney, Bill Labrado, said Rosie seemed a bit aggressive in his statement. I didn't really see any animation from the prosecutor or judge, Labrado said of the hearing. Mr. Rosie did the vast majority of the talking for the defense. Without knowing what had been happening since I got off the case, it seemed a bit aggressive, telling the judge she didn't know anything about the case. Knowing a little bit of background, I think I and everyone else anticipated the continuance would be asked for today. Labrado and Robert Scremen stepped in as counsel for Allen in January when Andrew Baldwin and Rosie were removed from the case. I had originally asked the trial to be set for October, Labrado said. I had told Judge Gull on the record in Carroll County Circuit Court that I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't know how much discovery there was. So we were going to need several months to prepare. When Mr. Scremen and I set those dates, we knew they would be tentative. We had no idea of what was coming our way. Labrado said he wasn't familiar with the Delphi case when assigned Allen as a client. Honestly, up until the middle of October, I didn't even know that Delphi was in Indiana, he said. I have a caseload of just murder cases, and I tend to focus on my cases. Labrado said his office is still digging out from under cases that piled up during COVID. Presently, he handles three to four murder cases a year due to his administrative duties. He has tried cases in front of Gull previously. The Supreme Court didn't just pick Judge Gull by accident. They picked her for a reason, he said. She absolutely knows what she's doing. They would be hard-pressed to find a judge as qualified as her anywhere in the state, in my opinion. She runs her courtroom, but she's fair and practical. I would not have taken the appointment if she wasn't the judge on the case. During Tuesday's hearing, Rosie told Gull that he didn't believe an end date should be set for the trial. Carroll County Prosecutor Nick McClelland said he had dwindled his witness list down to 40 to 45 people and was satisfied with the May trial date. We're not saying we're not ready. We're just saying we don't want you to bookend this, Rosie said to the judge. The defense said they would need at least 15 business days to present their case in chief. Labrado says that seems excessive. I did a life without parole case last year, a quadruple homicide and it is rare for the defense to have as many witnesses as the prosecution, as the prosecution would have the burden of proof. From my perspective, when I was reviewing the discovery, five to seven days at most would be needed for the defense to present their case, but I have not seen all of the discovery. Labrado said it was stated during the hearing that when Gall set the trial for three weeks and a substantial amount of time had passed without objection from the attorneys, the defense did file a motion on April 29th stating that they feared they would not have enough time to present their case and requested the May 7th hearing. She used a baseball analogy and told the defense it is her job to call the balls and strikes and not to manage attorneys, Labrado said. 
Galt stated during the hearing she would only be communicating with the defense in person or chambers in future, as her emails were becoming a part of court documents filed by the attorneys. The defense on Tuesday filed their second motion requesting Galt recuse herself from the case. The first time she declined citing an Indiana Supreme Court ruling in which she was allowed to stay on the case. Allen's attorneys originally asked for a speedy trial citing the diminished health and well-being of their client who was housed at Wabash Valley Correctional Facility. At the end of the hearing they asked for housing for Allen. The topic was not discussed publicly between the attorneys and Gall. Labredo said the back and forth between the attorneys and the judge is not typical for trials. This has a different dynamic to it, he said. These are attorneys that don't normally deal with one another. Frankly, there are not a lot of serious violent crimes in Carroll County from what I can gather. Mr. Allen's attorneys were appointed, and as far as I know, they were not connected before, nor have they had any dealings with Mr. McClelland in the past. In Allen County, I know who the prosecutors are. I have a working relationship with them. We have an understanding of how our judges work. We all kind of have an idea of the players in the game, and this trial is just different. When Mr. Scremen and I were on the case, we had a good working relationship with the prosecutors. Keep in mind, we were only on the case for about 90 days. Labredo said during his time on the case, he was able to get through a small amount of discovery, but enough to prove to him that Alan is innocent. There is more discovery in this case because no arrest has been made in five and a half years, he said. I believe Mr. Allen is innocent, not because he told me, but based on the evidence I saw. I have not seen all of the evidence because there was a lot and we could only get through so much in 90 days, less than 90 days actually. The evidence gaining attention in the media in recent weeks is the bullet found at the crime scene, quote, under Libby's shoe, under Abby's body, end quote. I didn't put much weight on that bullet because it wasn't fired from a gun, Labrina said. I was always of the mindset that you have 100 plus people Looking for these girls, several were most likely armed. That bullet could have come from anywhere, in my opinion. When asked about the location of the bullet, Labredo said, That crime scene was horribly contaminated. You had search parties out looking for these girls. No one knows if they were killed right there, or if their bodies were moved prior to or after they were killed. There may be an answer, but I just didn't see it in the discovery I viewed in that short time frame. Labreda said he would not go into more detail about the crime scene at this time. I do not want to hinder the defense or the prosecution. It would not be fair to Mr. Allen or the families of those little girls, he said. I feel horrible for those families. Allen will be back in Carroll County on May 21st to the 23rd for a hearing to determine if confessions he allegedly made to his wife, mother, ISP, IDOC officers and inmates are admissible in court, as well as a motion filed by the defense to sanction the state for delayed discovery. The court will also address a document filed by McClellan on May 6th that he says incriminates Allen in the crimes.